consideration provided by It's a taste of all a day not to miss Ooh. Werther's original limited edition harvest caramels discover the original fall flavor Does your plug-in fade too fast? Try Febreze Fade Defy Plug. It has built-in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. La, 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 la. Make sure to catch the lovely Michael Michelle on the season finale of Dynasty tonight on The CW. Thank you so much for helping us out today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. I got to come home. <laughs> and since I've co-hosted in New York, that mm -hmm. means next time I get to play with Kevin and Michelle in Los Angeles. Oh, please come. That. Please come. Today. I'll tell you what. You need a day off? <laughs> if you need a day off, I'll work it out. If, Michael, if you're coming. Happening now. Sheriff Javier Salazar frustrated that a man shot by one of his deputies was out in the first place after getting help from law enforcement for mental health. We take you through the process when officers bring someone in for an emergency detention. We had some more heavy rain this morning, but we're actually trimming back rain chances heading into the weekend. Your forecast coming up. October, it's time to break out the pumpkin spice and rake in some savings. Coming up, what top-rated products are discounted this month. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, a vaccine mandate for staff at San Antonio Independent School District will remain in place. A Bear County judge siding with SAISD today, upholding the requirement and ruling against a temporary injunction request that was filed by the state. This ruling made by the 45th Civil District Court Judge Mary Lou Alvarez after a two hour hearing. The state attorney general's office plans to appeal the decision. SAISD's vaccine mandate is set to take effect October 15th unless that appeal changes things. You can read more about this on KSAT.com. Turn off your phone and stay quiet. It's what one Houston student says he was told this morning after a man shot through a glass door and opened fire inside a Houston school. We are learning more about this shooting and about the suspect who is currently in police custody. Houston police responding to the call for an active shooter at around 1145 this morning. Yeah, Houston Police Chief Troy Finner says the suspect, a 25 year old man, a former student at that school, armed with a rifle, shot through the front door of the building and made his way inside. He fired at least one shot at a school employee, striking the victim in the back. That person taken to a Houston hospital. Chief Finner says the suspect surrendered shortly after that. He says there are more than a thousand students at the school. None of them were hurt. A motive, though, still being investigated. We're supposed to take these people to get help. It appears that's been done at least twice. Why is he even here? New at five, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar referring to 38 year old Nicholas Charles Norris, who was shot and killed yesterday by a Bear County Sheriff's Office deputy. According to the sheriff, Norris had been in contact with law enforcement several times in the past couple of weeks. Salazar said the county's mental health team voluntarily brought the man to the hospital once and another agency had performed an emergency detention. The sheriff's question after yesterday's shooting, why wasn't Norris getting the help? Garrett Berger talks with a mental health advocate about how the process works in general. When police and deputies bring someone to the hospital, that's where their input ends. After that, the head of the San Antonio affiliate of the National Alliance on Mental Illness says it's about medical decisions. And if they feel like that person doesn't need to be held, they won't. If someone's brought in on an emergency detention, they have to have a psychiatric evaluation within 12 hours. Doctors decide whether to discharge or detain them based on if they're a risk to themselves or others. If, that if they feel like the person is stable and can be released, then they should be released. And if the doctor wants to detain someone past 72 hours, a judge has to approve it. That's when public defenders get involved and their job is to represent what their client wants, not the doctor. We represent the person's interest, not the best interest of the community or the best interest of the patient. Even if the judge grants an order of protective custody, Beach says patients are usually discharged within 14 days. And there are some, you know, there's some provisions where a person can get longer term care, but you know, it's not that common and it's harder to get. Beach says discharged mental health patients still get follow up plans. But if they don't follow through on that, of course, they're, you know, they may end up back, you know, on the street or causing a problem. 
possibly starting the cycle again. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We are still working to learn more details about what led up to that shooting yesterday, including what Norris had been doing outside of the convenience store that was scaring customers and eventually led to Norris being pursued and shot by Bear County deputies. Yesterday, Sheriff Javier Salazar said they were using body cam video and video shared on social media that shows a deputy being dragged by Norris's vehicle to determine whether Norris was shot before or after that. We have requested that body cam footage from the sheriff's office. Researchers behind a new study say a federal database that records deaths caused by police officers missing some important data. The study was conducted by the University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Researchers found more than 30,000 people died because of police violence between 1980 and 2008, 2018. They say more than 17,000 of those deaths, or about 56%, are not recorded in the National Vital Statistics System. That's a real problem because then we don't really know in each community what the, the true toll of police violence is. Researchers say black Americans are 3.5 times more likely to be killed by a police officer than a white person. Indigenous and Hispanic Americans are almost twice as likely to die at the hands of police. The National Association of Police Organizations did not respond to a request for comment. A spokesperson for the National Center for Health Statistics says one explanation for the missing data is that death certificates don't always note whether there was police involvement. The San Antonio Police Officers Association now operating under an evergreen clause in its contract with the city. This after its most recent contract expired yesterday. Today, the city and the police union met to negotiate a new police collective bargaining agreement. The evergreen period remains in effect till a new deal is reached. The city and the police union plan to meet again next week to negotiate more on the deal. New at five, an electrical issue believed to have been what sparked a fire at a Southside mobile home this afternoon. That home now considered a total loss. It happened in the 10,800 block of Pleasanton Road. Firefighters at the scene told us the fire sparked from an electrical short in a window AC unit. The flames were quickly put out and the home was destroyed. No one was hurt. We have an update on the death of a man who was hit by a driver along I-10's access road. The victim identified as 27-year-old Michael Stephen Webb. He died Tuesday morning after he was hit by a driver near I-10 and La Quintera Parkway. San Antonio police say a driver didn't see Webb in the road, couldn't avoid hitting him. No charges are pending. The San Antonio Police Department also asking you to be on the lookout for this man. 68-year-old Carlos Navidad. He has been missing since September 11th. He was last seen in the 5,000 block of Greenside. SAPD says Natavadot has a medical condition, requires a doctor's care. If you have any information, call SAPD at 210-207-7660. A woman who is running at a Brackenridge Park on a trail says that she was kidnapped and sexually assaulted by a stranger on Monday. Three days later, San Antonio police arresting 29 year old Brandon Alexander Garcia. The victim says she was attacked by the man with a gun near Mulberry and Avenue A. She says the suspect forced her into his car, drove to his house, and that is where he assaulted her. She says afterward he asked where she lived and he drove her home. Investigators used surveillance cameras to connect Garcia to the crime. He was arrested yesterday on several charges, including aggravated kidnapping and aggravated sexual assault. An accident involving a big rig near the fine silver curve is clear. Lanes were shut down for a few hours after the big box truck crashed around nine this morning. The fine silver curve is at I-35 and I-10. This has happened before. It's unclear what caused the driver to crash. At last check, though, no one was hurt. Well, some heavy rain in spots early, early this morning. Our weather watchers have called in with some temperatures and also some rainfall totals. Leon Springs, a little bit less than a quarter inch of rain there, but some higher totals. Universal City in Joe's backyard, nearly two inches of rain, a little bit more than a half inch of rain in New Braunfels, 0.36 up in Bernie. Thank you to our weather watchers. As we look ahead to this evening, low chances of rain continue. I'm going to show you radar coming up. We've got a few teeny, teeny, tiny showers trying to get going. So we'll keep in a minimal chance of rain this evening. But if you're heading out to a high school football game, 
things are looking good and with clouds lingering, it won't be too hot as we wrap up the work and school week. But what about the weekend? We are trimming back rain chances. We'll talk about that and get you a look at your full seven day forecast coming up in just a bit. Ursula. Thank you, Katie. Textile wants to know what the public thinks about a proposal to expand Loop 1604 in East Bear County. Our Samuel King joins us now. Sam, these plans are still in the early stages, right? And Stephen Ursula, there's no funding yet, so Textot is still in that planning stage. This project would cover the stretch of Loop 1604 from FM 78 to I-10. That's out near uh, JBSA Randolph. It would turn from a divided highway into more of an expressway or freeway getting rid of the traffic lights. Coming up at six, a potential timetable of when construction could start and what drivers who live in that area think about it. Uh, one big traffic issue that we're facing this evening is uh, on the northeast side, heading out of town on I-35. So let's take a look at that here. This is I-35 at uh, Walsham. You can uh, see the traffic slowing down there, so watch out for that uh, this evening. So let's take a quick look at what that means for travel time. Loop 410 to New Braunfels, 33 minutes. Also some slowdowns on 35 north of New Braunfels. Steve, Ursula. Thank you, Samuel. A reminder today, the first day for CPS Energy to start shutting off power for past due accounts. The first disconnections are for those who have not paid in the past 12 months, aren't on any kind of assistance and haven't responded to the utilities calls. CPS Energy says if you can avoid having your power shut off by setting up a payment plan, if you're unable to pay the full amount, you can read more about the disconnections and when saws plans to start its own shutoffs right now on KSAT.com. Another potential weapon in the fight against COVID-19 could soon be on the way to you. Drug maker Merck releasing promising data on a new treatment for the virus. ABC's Rena Roy has details. It's an antiviral drug so promising its maker Merck halted final clinical trials early in consultation with the FDA. This is the first uh, oral antiviral that will be available to combat uh, COVID-19. The pharmaceutical company releasing new data about molnupiravir, which cut the risk of hospitalization or death in half in those trials. It actually inserts into the RNA of the virus and stops it from working. And that really is, is the magic of how this works. The drug maker says the prescription pill even appears to work against variants, and they'll soon be taking it to the FDA for emergency use authorization. This as vaccine mandates take effect across the country. California announcing the nation's first statewide shot requirement for school children ages 12 to 17 following full FDA approval. Which will give us time to work with districts, give us time to work with parents and educators. Uh, to build more trust and confidence. Now there is some positive news. The U.S. is seeing its first notable decline in the COVID infection rate in more than three months, with hospitalizations down by more than 29,000 patients in recent weeks, and the daily case average also down by 33% in the last month. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. It is a new month and a new season, which also means it's a new set of sales. Up next, if you're in the market for some new tech, even a new mattress, we're going to take a look at where to shop and when to buy. October, time to break out the pumpkin spice, maybe tend to the house and yard. Also time to find some deals. 12 Inner Sides Marilyn Moritz tells us which of Consumer Reports top rated products you can find at a discount this month. The fall season means raking in some savings. First, Amazon's big tech announcement in September means deals in October. They announced a smart robot a smart thermostat, a fitness tracker, and a brand new Echo Show. And that Echo Show means that they're going to start discounting the older items. The second generation Echo Show smart speaker is now on clearance for $116 at Best Buy. Consumer Reports says it has decent sound quality. If your autumn chores need a chainsaw, the Oregon Electric Corded Chainsaw is cut to $85 at Walmart. It's lightweight and handy for hedges. 
As the temperatures drop outside, a smart thermostat helps inside. The Google Nest Learning Thermostat is down to $199 at ABT Electronics, Home Depot, Amazon, and Staples. Consumer Reports says this is one of the best they've tested. Next, a home smoke alarm. The first alert one length smart smoke and carbon monoxide detector is $82 on Amazon. You can control it right from your phone. And as we get closer to Columbus Day, look for big deals on mattresses. Mattress sales happen so frequently that you don't ever really need to pay full price. If there's a mattress that you like and it's not on sale right now, wait a week or two, check back, and it's probably going to be on sale again. And October is typically a good time to get a deal on ovens or cooktops. Keep in mind, because of the chip shortage, the particular appliance you want could be backordered. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katie Blake in for Adam Kasky today. What did she say, like teeny tiny? Teeny they tiny are, showers. They are teeny little. tiny raindrops or something like that, right? They are little, little. Wait till I show you on radar. <laughs> Very small. And you can kind of see that with the clouds out there. I know that view of live cam, we, we have the sun hitting some of the clouds, so it was a little obscured. But the clouds, they're not growing very tall, and we need taller clouds to produce a lot of rain. So more than anything this evening, some humidity and some cloud cover. Uh, but we've had some beneficial rain this week, two rounds of beneficial rain. Here's last night's rain, last night and very early this morning. A couple of bullseyes, one along and south of Highway 90 from from Del Rio into Uvalde County and then places like Elmendorf picked up more than four inches of rain very early this morning, more than three inches of rain in Floresville, uh, nearly two and a half in Sutherland Springs. So some beneficial rain for some areas, not only early today, but also previously this week. And as we head into the next couple of days, those rain chances will get trimmed back. Temperatures have been allowed to climb into the mid to upper 80s for a lot of us with some clearing this afternoon, a bit warmer down in Laredo, and we've got some upper 70s, low 80s in the hill country. All that rain from early this morning has moved into far east Texas, into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's out of here. And the thought was heading into this afternoon, early this evening, was that with a little bit of sunshine, some warming, the atmosphere would be able to rebound a little bit, and we could have seen some more scattered activity, but that has not played out. And as the day continues to go on, we'll lose the heating, and even that small chance of rain will drop out of the forecast, but I promised I'd showed you just how small the little showers are. There is, yeah. <laughs> so there's LaGrange, there's I-10. So this is even north of Flatonia and Wilder. So um, that's really the closest thing we have to San Antonio currently, this little itty bitty shower. So if you've got a football game to head to this evening, things are looking good. I know a couple days ago, it was quite uncertain as to our forecast for tonight, but other than one of those small showers, things are looking really good. Mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies. Temperatures falling into the 70s as we get closer to halftime. It will be muggy out there this evening, but with that cloud cover, it won't be overly hot, and that's some good news. Here is the rain from this morning into parts of Louisiana and down into the Gulf of Mexico, but there is some more rain starting to develop in the western part of Texas. We've still got our rainmaker here swirling counterclockwise over northern New Mexico. This is a nice cutoff area of low pressure or rain-making energy. That's what all this red and orange color is. That's good rain-making energy, and that helped us out with the rain early in the day today. Watch what happens though as we get into the day on Saturday all that rain making energy is going to continue to move north and east even farther away from us so that's why we'll hold on to just a minimal chance of rain tomorrow and then as we get into next week our weather pattern does quiet down and that means no chance of rain and actually some pleasant weather next week so tomorrow another low chance of a shower or storm and let me show you what that looks like on future cast again this evening a stray shower, but I wouldn't hold your breath. We get into the day on Saturday uh, past lunchtime. I'll be looking off to the northwest for a couple of spotty little showers and maybe a rumble of thunder to develop. But coverage of rain tomorrow is going to be very, very isolated in nature, so it should not mess up your Saturday plans. But keep in mind there will be a little pop up thunder shower possible tomorrow, mainly in the afternoon. Otherwise, high temperatures mid to upper 80s, light easterly winds will hold on to a decent amount of cloud cover tomorrow, and then we'll see some more sun on Sunday. Sneak peek to next week. It's looking really nice, mainly because our dew points are going to take a nice tumble. It'll be pretty noticeable by Monday, so we'll have plenty of sunshine, some drier air next week. It'll still be warm in the afternoons with highs near 90. 
but we will always take lower humidity where we can get it, especially after a week when some folks got some beneficial rain. Guys. Thank you, Katie. You know who's really happy about the change in the forecast? Well, he was trying to pay yeah, off yeah, Adam yeah, Caskey. Yeah, yeah, Greg Simmons joins us without <laughs> yes. a raincoat, yes. a very happy man at Heroes Stadium. That's right. Greg, there's some big games tonight. Yeah. Yeah, sure are, and especially we're in the middle of district right now, and this one will be a huge one right here with playoff implications when Madison takes on Reagan in District 286A. When we come back, we'll have a live preview here from Hero Stadium where it is a perfect night for football. And our BGC road trip features Marion searching for a major milestone when we come back. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to Hero Stadium for the big game and our big game coverage tonight. That's because Madison is taking on Reagan in a battle of the unbeatens in District 28-6A. Now, the Mavericks have a little bit of the upper hand over the Rattlers because their overall record is 3-1, and 2-0 and in district. Their only loss was to number 3 Smithson Valley in Week 2 to go along with their wins over Clemens, Roosevelt, and Churchill. Likewise, the Rattlers are 2-0 and in district, but their only two losses of the season were non-district games against number 1 and number 2 teams in the city, Brennan and Steele. Now these two collide with playoff implications on the line. This game is super important. It's going to set the tone for the rest of our season, so we're going to come out ready to play. I think this game is it's just a stepping stone to the rest of the season. It's an obstacle for us to get to playoffs. Well, Madison, they got some cats over there. Um, I know I know some of the guys over there played 7 on 7 with them. There's some good guys. Got some friends over there, but uh, I think uh, I believe that we have a better team than them, hopefully, and I believe we'll come out with the win on Friday night. Up tonight, Madison against Reagan here at Hero Stadium at 7 p.m. Johnson and Churchill Comalander. Warren against Taft at Gustafson. Harlan and O'Connor at Ferris. Brackenridge will take on Sam Houston at Alamo. Highlands and Burbank, SAISD. Jefferson against the Memorial. Edgewood Veterans. Laredo Sigaroa at Southwest at Dragon at 7.30. Southwest Legacy, Laredo Martin. Shirley Field at 7 o'clock. Southside will be against Wynn and Eagle Pass at 7. Randolph and Cole on post at Fort Sam at 7.30. Houston St. Thomas travels to Central Catholic. Take on the number three buttons at Bob Benson. Antonio at San Antonio Christian in Kingsville against number eight Pleasanton at Eagle Stadium. Our big game coverage road trip will have photographer Eddie Latigo headed south tonight with his first stop in Lido to see if the Pirates can get the number 12 Poteet Aggies to walk the plank. Then it's down the road in the tire where the 10th ranked Mustangs host Stockton and finally pulling into Jordan to see if the Indians can upset number two and undefeated Marion. And in case you missed it last night, Manu Ginobili decided to show us he still has some grandpa juice left. The Spurs' new special advisor to basketball operations decided to demonstrate he still has some ups. What, three years after his retirement? Not bad at all. Okay, don't forget to follow us tonight on our BGC app. That's where we have all the live Texas sports productions games that you can check into, even if you're here at the game. So bring your phone to the game. Also, join us on Twitter. And, of course, after the, all the games are over, join us on the Night Beat at 10 for all your highlights. Live from Hero Stadium, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Greg. We'll see you back here at 6. We'll be right back. All right, compared to earlier this week, rain chances are much lower tomorrow. Just some isolated thunder showers possible, primarily in the afternoon. Then rain chances drop out of the forecast Sunday. We'll see some more sunshine. That'll put us in the upper 80s. And next week looks really nice with some lower humidity in place. So we've got a nice stretch of weather coming up. Steve and Ursula. It does look good. Thank you. And thanks so much for joining us for the News at 5 this morning. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.